guys, welcome back to my channel and I have a great video for you today, a property classic. We are going to discuss the London commuter belt, which I'm pretty sure some of you may know what that entails, but some of you may not know what that means. So not long ago, I recently posted a poll on my Twitter page and polls are amazing by the way. I plan on doing a lot more of those, but it was something along the lines of if you are a potential first time buyer, where would you plan on buying? And then the three options were in London, in the commuter belt or anywhere for investment, right? Where would your first property be? Like, what is your plan? And I think majority of people said anywhere it's for investment. So then that led me to think that a lot of people who would potentially be first time buyers really soon don't plan on moving out of home. They just plan on buying somewhere and getting on the property ladder for investment purposes. And I thought that was interesting because I always thought that people that wanted to buy would usually have the intention of moving out. So that was really interesting. And you know, for me, I love researching things. I'm like a lawyer slash psychological mind slash sociology person. I love like researching and understanding why people do things anyway and then i think the second option was of course the commuter belt because a lot of people really realize and know thank god that london is not as affordable as it once was but then there was still a substantial amount of voters who did vote to be in london and i thought wow you guys must have some money <laughs> so that is where this video sort of came from i've always wanted to do a video on this topic so many people that i come across in my daily life or when i do talks and so on they really want to buy and i think a lot of people have london so close to their heart and maybe they they don't really know much outside of London so to them it just seems really far it's really not far you guys come out of this box and just explore and research and I just want to bring this video to you guys so you have a real idea of your options the London commuter belt consists of various areas villages and towns all sort of jotted around London give or take an hour to half an hour commute away and these are areas that people like myself have ended up going to buy because we cannot obviously afford the high prices in London. At the moment, the average property price in London is said to be around £600,000. I don't know about you, but I cannot afford that at my ripe 23 year old age. So the next best thing would be to buy in an area that is commutable to London, especially if you work in London and you've been brought up, raised here, and this is your home, like me. London was my home. So of course, I'm not exactly going to go and move to a completely random city like Manchester because that's too far detached from my life, from my family, from my friends, from my workplace. So I'm gonna to go to the next best place, north, south, east and west of London. And these are basically popular areas and some not so popular because they haven't quite had their time yet. But there are definitely areas that are going up in value. St Albans isn't particularly affordable now because so many people over the years have flocked there and the value of the properties have just soared through the roof. So there are so many other places. I'm going to add a image for you guys somewhere and show you just to get an idea of what sort of areas are on this list of the commuter belt. So why buy in the commuter belt and why leave London? Well, the first thing of course is price. Price would be the number one factor for pretty much most of us. You are guaranteed in most of these commuter belt areas to get more for your money when it comes to property. And I'm talking three bedroom houses, one bedroom flats, two bedroom flats are certainly going to be far cheaper than say if you bought an equivalent in London. If you're buying a flat outside of London, the chances are quite likely for you to get a lower service charge on your flat. The average house price in London is about £600,000. I mean, the costs are great. But there is a con when it comes to price, when it comes to money. And I'm talking about the actual commuting factor when it comes to traveling into London. Of course, your travel is going to be far higher than say buying a travel card for zones one to three. For example, Essex is a very, very big county. So prices vary when it comes to property and when it comes to traveling into London. It could go from 1,000 pounds a year for a travel card to say 6,000 pounds a year for a travel card, okay? So it just depends on where you go. So these are all factors to consider when you are choosing your areas and the same goes for places in Hertfordshire, in Kent, in Sussex and so on. Prices for travel vary and prices for property vary. There is no one stamp fits all, one size fix all sort of thing in any of these counties. But then there are some pros when it comes to traveling into London from the commuter belt areas because you can in some places get into London in 25 
minutes now if you are an underground user and i am speaking from experience because i used to live on the underground zone two to be quite frank and you can get into the city of london very quickly but you can also not you can honestly go from one part of london to another and that could take you up to an hour or over an hour okay well if you live in a commuter belt area and you have trains going straight into central London, into the city, so stations like Liverpool Street, stations like King's Cross, stations like Victoria, these hub stations that have so many different lines coming out of them going all around London, these were made for us commuters. They are perfect. Gravesend in Kent is about 24 minutes journey. Braintree in Essex, Deep Essex, is about an hour. Um, where else can I tell you guys? Luton is about half an hour. Um, Basildon is about 33 minutes. Stevenage in Hertfordshire is about 25 minutes. <laughs> Do you see where I'm going with this? So yes, you may be paying a little extra for your traveling in, but you can travel in extremely, extremely quickly. Things to look out for when it comes to traveling, you may not always be guaranteed a seat on the train because there are loads of people commuting in to get into work and to get home at those peak rush hour times, like the eight o'clocks and the six p.m.s. So that's the money and the travel guys. Let's move on to the actual lifestyle and the vibe of these places. Generally speaking, they are usually in leafier areas, quieter areas, cleaner areas, just areas that are a bit calmer and not so crazy as like the center of London or some parts of London. Crime is also usually a bit lower in these places and you just have a better lifestyle, usually. But there are some cons to the lifestyle in these areas and the number one con for me, being a woman of color, is that there is less diversity. You know, London is a melting pot, a hub of culture, of different foods and options, of different kinds of shops for you to get your hair and skin products and so on nightlife going out restaurants all of these things are in london everything you could ever want is in london right when you go to these other towns that is not necessarily going to be the case unless it's somewhere like luton i think luton is a lot more mixed in terms of diversity and cultures but some places in essex or hertfordshire or kent are not okay and these are things just to bear in mind if diversity is important to you you can still live outside of london just research before you are dead set on an area in essex that is probably has nobody that looks like you in that area you just want to make sure that you are going to be comfortable with that if that's the case and if quite frankly you don't care about diversity in your area then you have a lot more options and choices but i would definitely say that in some places that is changing because of course commuters and people who are buying out of london are then moving to these areas and diversifying them so i moved into my property exactly eight months ago today i just looked at the date and realized and when i moved here there was no sort of shop that I could buy my hair products or my planting or you know just different things like that well fast forward about four months in I was wandering around and I came across an Afro-Caribbean shop in the heart of my area and that was so liberating for me I never realized how much I would have appreciated that being on my doorstep until one came along and my life changed four months in Thank you, Lord. I think that a lot of people have this view that Essex is just one place and Kent is just one place and Hertfordshire is just one. Well, no, it varies. It can go further out, it can go further east or further west and these places vary in one county so, so much. Most of you would know that places outside of London tend to be better for bringing children up um, because it's quieter, it's maybe a lot safer in some places, and the schooling. So let's say you're not just a commuter, you know, going into London for work, but you are actually bringing up a young family and you live in Kent. I'm not a mom yet, I'm not a wife yet, but I know for a fact that I won't be raising my children in London. Even though I loved it, they will definitely have you know, part of their life in London because we have family in London. But in terms of them living in London, no. Maybe when they are a bit older, then maybe, who knows, I might move back into London. But in terms of the early stages of our family, I wouldn't, I would say no. <sighs> but then there are some cons about the commuter belt. The commuter belt can be quite sleepy in some places. I'm a Londoner, I'm Caribbean on top of that, 
I'm fast paced, I walk quickly, I talk quickly, my mind is quick, I've got things to do, I wanna get in and out of a shop. Well, that doesn't quite happen when you live, say, in Essex. It's a lot slower, you know, people are a lot calmer, people are a lot more chilled, people are not in a rush like we Londoners are, they're not in a rush to get to places and it gets frustrating for me. Sometimes you just wanna get into a supermarket, buy your food and leave right that is not always the case and even in Birmingham like and Birmingham's a city but when I lived in Birmingham like there'd be times where I'd be in a rush because I'm in between lectures and I just want to go to a supermarket get some food shopping quickly and go end up having a big conversation with the sales assistant because they want to know about your life how are you how's your day we'll talk about topics on money on areas and it's just like sometimes that's great because one thing about London is not everyone is friendly and in the area that I live in and in a lot of areas outside of London that I've been to and experienced you know my brother lives out of London my dad does so from my experience that you know people are really really friendly most of the time but um in London that's not always the case but then in London there are also friendly people too so you just you never know what you're going to get shopping centers might not have everything you need there may not be a Zara in Essex somewhere that you live or in Kent somewhere that you live and there are like 10 Zaras on Oxford Street that's just like a really superficial example but that's something that's important to me so now I have to order online right so you may do a lot more ordering online if you live out of London rather than like going into London on a Saturday when you really have other stuff to do or on a Sunday Sunday. I'm rambling but I think you get the picture it's a lot slower out of London so don't expect to have a London life or a fast-paced life outside of London some places really defined areas like St Albans and Watford those places will definitely be a lot more London-y and London vibed and yeah a lot more fast-paced because there are probably a lot more Londoners there but overall I would say no it's gonna be a lot slower than you're used to so some other things to add if you are a driver and you want to move outside of London, that is probably a pro for you because you will often get a lot of free parking or really cheap parking at my local shopping center you can park there for hours and it, will, it always seems to be one pound like I don't understand and don't quote me on this but when I used to live in northwest London I lived basically in west London so my local shopping center was Westfield and parking there I'm pretty sure was quite expensive it was like six pounds or something for two hours I don't remember because it was quite a long time ago but I remember it was a ripoff I know that my aunt who lives like pretty central she'll have to get like parking permits if you don't have a driveway you'll end up having to get parking permits well here where I live you can literally just park where you want on the road and you're entitled to that and you don't need to have like an added cost to park outside your house which honestly does not make any sense to me outside my own house my own front door why am I doing that one con that I would also add about living in the commuter belt and being a London person at heart is that if you do, like me, love to go out in London, love to go and eat in London or have drinks in London and it's the evening, you are always, always most certainly going to have to plan ahead, plan your journey ahead. Like if you drive to your station and then after work you're having drinks and then you're going home like 10, 11 or 12 o'clock, um, you need to plan, you've got to plan, right, well, the train ends at 12, so I now need to get somewhere, then I now need to maybe get an Uber somewhere, or, you know, whereas if you live in London and you live off of one of the underground lines, you can just get a train and walk home. It's not that simple if you live out of London, so a lot of planning goes into your nights out in London or your evenings out even in London. So guys, I hope you liked this video. It was really fun for me to discuss because as I said before, this is a topic for discussion let's talk about it I want to see your comments down below on where you would plan to buy and why you might not want to live outside of London and why you would live outside of London I want to hear your thoughts on this topic because this is a real topic guys and so many people I have come across are in the sort of mindset of if they can't buy in London they're not going to buy at all and for me that's really sad and I would hope that many of you guys would start to see things a little bit different after watching this because honestly getting on the property ladder anywhere is better than 
renting anywhere. If you did like this video, please do leave it a thumbs up. It's just a great indicator for me to know that you guys actually enjoy my property videos and talks. Because if I don't see the likes and I don't see the good comments, I won't do them because I don't feel that you guys are enjoying them. But if I do see the likes and comments, I will do more. I will do like one or two property videos a month for you, providing I know that you enjoy it. If you are new to my channel, please do subscribe because there are loads of videos coming and there are loads of videos for you to also see that I've already done. So go watch. And if you aren't new and you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Let's just welcome you into the family. Let's welcome everyone into the family, guys. It means a lot to me. It also lets me know that you guys like what you're seeing. Anyway, I'm just so grateful that you guys are watching me to date. We are so close to 3,000 subscribers. So let's push this video and push any other videos that you enjoy so that more people out there can see what we are doing over here. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will have many more videos coming up. Very interesting ones. So keep your eyes open. Bye.